Just a heads up, this video assumes that you've completed Persona 5 Royal and will spoil about the first 10 hours of Persona 3 Portable and also Reload. If that's a problem then click off the video now. There will also be one section where I completely spoil Persona 3 but I'll be marked in the chapters below. Use them to skip to the section you want. Hope you enjoy! Finally! After a year of playing, a model change and a short break, I finally completed Persona 3 Portable. But is it any good? I started a series on Persona 5, so how does it compare? In this video we're going to explore how they compare and my overall opinion on the game. Let's jump right into it. To start things off, I'm going to recite a joke. How many Persona fans does it take to change a light bulb? Three. A Persona 5 one to screw in the light bulb, a Persona 4 one to hold the ladder, and a Persona 3 one to say how fine it is being this dark. Persona 3's story and themings are very, very dark. It's about people dealing with the consequences of death. It's about a bunch of teenagers trying to cope with the fact that things don't last forever. There's a few points in the game where I genuinely cried. It really makes you think why you're here and kind of puts everything into a perspective of some sort that it never really tells you the correct answer for but that's a good thing and if you like that kind of theming then that's perfectly fine for you honestly though i preferred the lightheartedness of persona 5 of course persona 5 has their own struggles and deep moments but when persona 3 tackles life and death it can get a little too real i actually had to take a break from the game because of how sad it made me. It definitely hits hard and I definitely think you have to be in the right headspace for this kind of game. Overall I do prefer Persona 5 in this aspect but I know some people will strongly disagree with me there and that's fine. I think this one's quite up to personal opinion. The story however, oh my god. So you start off as Protagon. You arrive to this new town and suddenly everything turns green. There's also coffins everywhere and blood, cause why not? You walk over to the dorm and meet a small boy there. He gives you your contract that you need to sign and then you meet your buddies that will stay with you throughout your journey. They tell you about this place called the Dark Hour, a time that exists between days and you have the power to be able to enter it and defeat some shadows. Everyone teams up and tries to destroy the 12 shadows that control the Dark Hour. It's a very interesting premise and a story in the whole is very interesting too. Of course, it's not as simple as I explain it. There are other twists and turns throughout, but I'm not gonna spoil you here. There was always something to look forward to, and the game is very good at dropping hints. There were some things I figured out before the game told me, which I felt really smart about, and there were some things that the game showed me, and I was like, why did I not figure this out earlier? While the pacing can be a little funky at times, I think the story is way more compelling than Persona 5. Persona 5 almost sends up an end goal that you can reach, which is fine, but you kind of know that it's going to happen eventually. Persona 3 is chocked full of surprises and twists. I generally did not know what would happen in the next week of Persona 3, and that next week could completely shift the game and make you think about everything in a brand new perspective. It's, it's amazing. So on this note, I'm going to give Persona Persona 3 the mark here. Persona 5's story is still good, but Persona 3's story just kind of blows it out of the park. And one thing that definitely helps with the story is the characters. So in Persona 5, the characters are fun. You start off with learning about their traumas and their difficulties, but then they kind of fall off. After you complete their dungeon or the associated dungeon, they kind of assume an archetype and then stick with it. This is not the case in Persona 3. Persona 3, characters go through multiple arcs and these are spread throughout the story. They do not open up straight away. You genuinely start off the game not being friends with them. I actually was a bit worried at the start of the game. You kind of just existing with them. That's what also makes them so cool. It gives everyone a life, which I think Persona 5 really doesn't do very well. In Persona 5, everyone can be at your beck and call in an instant. Sure, they might be busy on social links on one day, but if you call them up, they will always come to Momentos with you. However, in Persona 3, some people will just straight up not come to Tartarus with you because they're busy. It's so cool. Another thing I want to explain is social links. So in Persona 5, there was a real problem with social links. 
They kind of weren't interwoven with the story. For example, through Tata's link. You have to take her out a few times and she grows in confidence. However, throughout the main story, no matter what point in the rank you are, she will always be nervous when going places. Kind of doesn't align together. Persona 3 social links are almost completely separate to what the main story does. Characters can go through their growth on one side, yet still having their own growth in the main story. The villains in Persona 3 do feel a little weak, but I'll explain that in the spoiler section. The gameplay though. Ah, oh, the gameplay. By the way, if you're enjoying the review, make sure to like the video and subscribe. It really helps out. Thank you. I understand Persona 3 is a product of its time. It couldn't exactly make these big dungeons and the big scales and the big palaces and everything. But dear lord, Tartarus sucks. For those who don't know, Tartarus is like Mementos. It's a completely randomly generated dungeon. Tartarus was just boring, sadly to say. It's very much a grind fest. And I really did not want to spend time in Tartarus. Like, at all. Luckily, in Reload, they do seem to be fixing this a bit. It's no longer going to be straight corridor after straight corridor, as well as a few interactables, but I am a little worried. By the end of the game, Tartarus felt samey. I'm just worried that Reload might fall into the same trap. One thing I do want to give it credit for, however, is the mini-bosses. Every few floors, there's going to be a very powerful enemy that you have to defeat to carry on. I found them fun, and they are genuinely challenging, but the grind of Tartarus is real, and it sucks. There is a change about the battle gameplay which I don't really like as well. So in Persona 5, you had quite a few elements at your disposal, including nuclear, sight, and gun. However, these are absent in Persona 3. But in compensation, they also split up the physical attack. Physical attack is now slice, pierce, and punch, which can be very hard to get used to. I made that mistake many times. Because the character's basic attack end up being one of those three physical attacks, you can get stuck at some places. It can be very frustrating when it feels like you just got unlucky. Persona 3's tracks are iconic. Mass Destruction, Master of Tartarus, Time, they're all absolute bangers. And they've snuck into my playlist way more than Persona 5 tracks. Although I'm sorry guys, nothing will top snowflakes from Persona 4. So the winner here is Persona 4. Now we're going to get into the very spoilery part of the review. If you want to skip it, click the chapters below and then you will skip it. Strega suck! <laughs> so one thing that really fails about Persona 3 is the villains. Ikutsi is probably the best one. He's a bit wacko and he's very manipulative. But he just kind of gave up at the end. Strega though are just such a missed opportunity. Chidori is definitely the better ones out there, but she's still not the best. Takai is built upon a little bit. But he just seemed like a crazy guy. And Jin was just a lapdog. I feel like the game could go on without Jin and it would be perfectly fine. His boss battle wasn't even hard. I also felt Ryoji was a little bit weird as well. I don't understand why they introduced him as a character. I need to get rid of him like three weeks later. He didn't really have any build up. He flirted with everyone and then just said, By the way, I am death. Goodbye. <laughs> it just seems so weird. The choice near the end as well doesn't really make sense to me either. Chops wants to kill him and then die, or not kill him, and have a chance of living? I know it's a lot deeper than that, and maybe it just doesn't make sense in my head. However, I shouldn't be all negative about this. Jinjo is such a Cinderella and I love him. His whole character arc, along with Ken and Akihiko, are really cool and they genuinely made me cry. <laughs> I loved how they handled it, and I love how it forces them to grow as a character. And you can see after that day, the tonal shift of the game is so different. It's very well done, and it made me cry, so bonus points there. Anyway, that was the spoiler section over. On to the conclusion. Overall, Persona 3 is a really great game. Would I recommend you play Portable? Uh... Probably not. Would I recommend you pick up Reload? Definitely. If anything about what I said intrigues you, pick it up. Portable ends up being a very different game from 5, and you're sacrificing a lot. You do have to be in the correct mindset for Reload and Portable, so do keep that in your head. However, I would highly recommend picking up Persona 3. Do I think it's better than 5? Yes. While the gameplay definitely sucks at some point, the characters and the story really pick it up. And at the end of the game, you're gonna look back and you're gonna be like, damn, that was an experience. 
Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the review.